So, match preview, France, Belgium, uh, duel between neighbors, it will be played in St. Petersburg, 10th of July, 9 o'clock Moscow time, 8 o'clock Central European, 2 o'clock on the East Coast in America. So, let's get straight into it. Um, I changed the order of the slides from my quarterfinal previous because I think it makes a little bit more sense this way. Current form... Um, we have France now had a great performance against Uruguay, which raised the average form to 82%. Still, the Denmark draw here um, is featured only half because France was playing with second string team, but this dampens their overall performance, as did kind of a non very not very convincing win over Australia. But uh, the three other performances were strong, and actually, it looks that if I look at this form curve disregarding the Denmark result. Uh, it looks like France is finding this right. Similar thing can be said for Belgium, except that in the game that didn't matter to them, they actually pulled off a big win, and this is only due that uh, it was a win against a team that was um, very strong. So, uh, and in the handicap markets, actually, the uh, England was favored. So, therefore, Belgium got here a very strong result, which boosts the form. Um, Against Japan, they were more favored, so that's why it's a slightly worse result. Tunisia and Panama, you know, uh, you gotta beat them, you won't make a lot of style points. They made a lot of points here against Brazil. Uh, that was their perfect match. Um, they beat the big giant, that's a 100% result, giving Belgium an average form of 90%. So, looking at it overall, Belgium has a slight advantage uh, with the showings they had so far. Although that um, I think in the knockout round, despite this great showing, I think uh, France actually is a little bit better. So, um, yeah, looking at the results, Belgium is a little bit better than France. However, Belgium had two really tough games. France had only one where they really needed to get going against Argentina, against Uruguay. It was almost... Leisurely, they got to, they got the win. That's all that counted. Accolades, we had this before. France are winners of the 1998 World Cup. They have also a second place finish in 2006, a third place finish in uh, 1986 and in 1958, and they made it also another time to the semis where they finished fourth in 1982. Uh, where many said actually they should have won the tournament. Uh, we, we may want to talk about the 82 World Cup and all the other World Cups in different videos. Now, um, Belgium finished fourth in 1986. It was the only semi final showing uh, when they um, went through the tournament. I think they upset the Soviet Union and then uh, they went through against Spain on penalties. So uh, by the time they met Argentina, they were already little bit tired and a little bit overreaching. They made it as a third place team in the second round. They also reached the final of the European Championships in 1980. Otherwise, there were no big showings at European Championships. However, France uh, were continental champions 1984 and 2000 with the great Zidane, with the great Platini. So those are the two big championships. This 2000 one is also the only championship of France that they have so far outside of their own country. So 1984, the tournament was held in France. 1998, the tournament was held in France. 2000, it was in Belgium and the Netherlands. So that's interesting. Um, we also have the Golden Ball by Zinedine Zidane and the Golden Boot by Just Fontaine in 06 and 58, respectively. Previous competitive matches. Well, for neighbors, they have surely a big history together and so it proves that there are actually quite some uh, competitive games between two of them reaching back to the 1938 World Cup in France where it was the first round match for uh, both teams where France won 3-1. Um, the next few matches are all qualifying matches for European Championships or World Cup qualifiers. So for the 58 World Cup, where France uh, did so well and finished third, uh, they met in Paris with France winning 6-3, then a nil-nil in Brussels. I think at that point France was already qualified. Um, not Han, not Han, Han perhaps in sure, but then twice they were put in group uh, 7 
interestingly. Uh, where and uh, also we see another world cup qualifier within group two so in world cup qualifiers if they meet they're in group two otherwise they're in group seven for european qualifiers very interesting to see here um yeah for the european qualifiers actually belgium had the upper hand twice um and they were played within 10 years of each other first belgium winning 2-1 then 1-1 and then again 2-1 and nil nil very very similar for the world cup qualifier um we had uh, for the 82 World Cup, this is where still France was on the rise, but also Belgium had a, a good squad at that time. Um, per, uh, France winning 3-2 at home, Belgium 2-0 at home. So it was always kind of the home team gets a slight advantage in these matchups. The biggest result between the two of them is when France ran riot in 1984 and basically solidified that they are the best team. I think it was three goals Platini, it was a 5-0 thrashing of Belgium in Nantes. And then the most recent one, and that's actually a long time uh, away already, uh, was when they met in a third place playoff at the World Cup in 86. Uh, I think at least France was playing a second string team, but still won 4-2 and finished in third place at that World Cup, a finish that they thoroughly deserved. But they were surely disappointed because they should have probably gone to the final as well. Uh, but twice Germany was in their way. So I already said a little bit about the semi-final records of those two nations. Belgium, uh, second time that they reach now the semi-final. Uh, first time they lost 2-0 to Argentina with Maradona scoring a typically Maradona goal. Um, for a while, I actually thought this that goal against Belgium is better than the one against England. Um, I think for England, he went he ran across the field, and that makes it a little bit more um, iconic, I would say. But if you watch that goal, it's also a wonderful goal. A goal it's hard to choose between those two. Now France has a richer semi-final record, and maybe that will bear out in the end for France because they've been they've been there. But it needed a while until they could finally get over that uh, semi-final stumbling block. The first semi-final they lost 2-5 to Brazil, uh, Pelé scoring three goals. This was the first real great showing of Pelé. Um, offensive spectacle, great uh, iconic game back then. Then another iconic game, probably the best of the 82 World Cup. 3-3 uh, between Germany and France. Um, I think Germany was ahead, France equalized, then this horrible foul of Schumacher, Tony Schumacher on Batistan. If you haven't seen it, you should watch, you should watch it on YouTube, it's surely out there. Um, that he didn't get a red card or any card for that is still beyond many people and it soured French-German relations for quite a while. And for a German squad at that time that was already disfavored because of the weird collusion against Austria where they played a one way they got an early goal both teams could advance with that result and were stopped playing then they eliminated of course the hosts in Spain and then they made this this was probably the most hated team uh, in World Cup history by um, almost everyone except Germany I would say France stormed out to a 3-1 lead in that one in the in overtime uh, but Germany came right back and I think the equalizer by was Klaus Fischer 3-3 is also one of the great goals in uh, in a semi-final uh, bicycle kick right in. Uh, thrilling game. What I've, I have only seen highlights, but um, from what you can tell from that, it was everything that you want from a court of, uh, from a semi-final clash. And then it was the first penalty shootout at the World Cup uh, that Germany won, although they still missed the first penalty. So yeah, uh, back then no one really knew that much about penalty shootouts. Uh, surely a game to watch. 1986 was not as great. I think Bremen scored early on and then they made another uh, late goal. France, I think, was already very tired. They had to play Italy, they had to play Brazil. So Germany was just, uh, yeah, it was lucky. I mean, Germany on that round, they had Morocco. And then they played the host Mexico, where they also went to penalties, but seemed much less of a struggle. And France was fresh of an epic 
win against Brazil in one of the most beautiful matches people say ever played. At home in 98, France finally got over, over the semi-final hurdle and made it to the final. That is a game, that's a game I saw. The others I have, of course, not seen. Um, I remember France yeah, being favored, but uh, they were solid in defense. Croatia was very do uh, yeah, dogged defending. Uh, they didn't. France tried to take the game to Croatia, but there was not much happening uh, in, the, in, the, in the first half. And then right after halftime, Shuka scores. And I remember saying, yep, that's it. France is not going to make a goal. Because that was the problem for France uh, in the whole knockout round. That while they made many goals in the first two games, they really struggled to get goals. And uh, France is known for having strikerless squads in a way. Uh, and that was the same thing in 98. It was also the same thing in 84 when the one I mean Palatini uh, ran riot, but they had not a, they had the last goal at this tournament in the stoppage time was the first one of a striker. So I really thought there is no way uh, I mean this is really bad uh, for France and I really wanted France to win back then. Uh, Shuka scores and it seemed like that's gonna be it. And then Turam comes right back and Puts it in the net just a minute later. And you gotta know, Thuram has never scored a goal for France before. And then he scores the winner not too long after. Uh, he only scored two goals for France. Those were those crucial goals from a, a defender, although a really, really great defender. I mean, uh, Thuram is, is an inspiring figure. I gotta say that. Lilium Thuram, if you have not heard about him, look, look, look him up on Wikipedia. Or somewhere, uh, absolutely wonderful defender, but also wonderful human being. Uh, he always stru struck me as a very, very thoughtful guy. Um, and then, yeah, it seemed all smooth sailing. Um, then Slaven Bilic kind of feigned some injury and got Laurent Blanc uh, suspended for the final. And I think that's the one thing that no one really wanted because Laurent Blanc was kind of this inspiration for France. He, he Bates and Deschamps, they were the backbone of that team. And yeah, uh, that left some sour taste because Blanc didn't do a thing. And I'm not sure now if he got a straight red card or if he just got his second yellow. Uh, but that seemed like a big blow for France. And then the other semi-final was also a rather boring uh, affair, the last one against Portugal, um, but at that point France had hit the stride. They struggled early in the tournament, uh, similar to this time around. Yeah, got their wins. I mean, uh, they, they, sorry, they have, haven't really struggled, but uh, they have not shown very well. Um, but yeah, at this point they had beaten Spain 3-1, they had beaten Brazil 1-0, Zidane in top shape. And then they meet Portugal, and it was a very, very boring game. I think Portugal had one chance, France just then relied on defending after they got a penalty. That, yeah, uh, was debatable, but I think justified. And Zidane, with almost no run-up to the penalty, pulled it in sharp to the left. And yeah, the Ricardo was tipped off by Figo. He played together with Zidane. And yes, he done sent another teammate home from Real Madrid and made it to the final. Um, so that's the semi-final record of those two nations. And again, if you watched my jersey review and preview of quarter and semi-finals respectively, you already know that this is the matchup. It's not necessarily the one that I most believe in, but it makes a lot of sense to me that, that that's the one I want to see. Uh, again, I can see France in all blue against Belgium in all red. I just don't quite see it that way. I think that this matchup would be the smartest one. Have France play in their traditional blue, white, red and Belgium in uh, yellow and black. And then it can be yellow socks or black socks, it doesn't matter. The problem is with the Belgium red kit, while well, it would work in, uh, from in many occasions that the red socks would clash. So yes, you could also may make France wear uh, blue socks, which is not something I really want to see. So 
you know, I have been agonizing over this jersey matchup for quite a while. I still think that this is the one they should go with. But I'm putting myself out on a limb here. And I probably will be wrong on this one. I'm fairly confident France will play in blue. I also see they can play white versus, versus red. I'm not so confident in the yellow, but this is the matchup that would more make more sense. If France insists on playing their uh, home kit, then Belgium should play in their away kit. Well, let me know if you have anything to add about the uh, uh, track records of France and Belgium, uh, jersey matchup and so on. Um, if you have anything to add to the history between those two countries, especially if you've seen more than I did. There have been a lot of friendlies, but I don't take friendlies as serious, especially for those things. And yeah, hit like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.